Hi, welcome to Kelsey Ed, and in this video tutorial series we're making a two-player racing game. This is video number three, and today we're going to be making harder win conditions. So instead of only passing the finish line to count for laps, we're going to add in checkpoints, and these will mean that the player has to go through each checkpoint one by one before they can progress to the next lap. Whereas what is seen here is just driving over the start line three times in order to get the win. Okay, so what I've done is I've just added in these checkpoints here, um, which you can't see because I've hidden them. Um, but I'll just reveal them for you now by pressing the show button. And each one of these checkpoints is deliberately placed near one of these difficult corners or just on an area of the course that I definitely want them to be able to complete. So what I did was I just created my own new sprite, went to paint, very simple, chose a nice rectangle, fill it with a white color, and I just had a green outline, of course, I mean, you can make any outline that you would prefer, but I just kind of like the green color. And um, draw yourself a nice rectangle, just like that. Uh, simple and you can see it's quite big at the moment, but that's fine. We're going to resize it in our own time First of all, we'll add text onto here um, So just here check point you can't see it because it's white, but don't worry. We'll just highlight it change the color to black and Here we go checkpoint and then you can choose yourself a nice fun font I like marker and then use the rotation to bring that into the correct orientation and put it over the top of your sprite and then you can resize your sprite appropriately so use your selection arrow and just resize your sprite to fit the text and that's about it really then you simply group it together and then you can resize it. Now, you could resize it from here and sort of just bring it down to like 40, which is fine, and that's actually pretty close to the size I want, um, but it might not perfectly, it actually perfectly fits in the track. <laughs> if it didn't, <laughs> uh, you could um, just move the up and down. You see it's moving with my keyboard arrows right now. I'm pressing it up and down, so you can get it into a perfect position using up and down. And also you can resize it um, here, but visually see it on screen. So you can kind of use the two together to get to the right size. Mine was more perfect when it was just natural. Um, so you would just duplicate that sprite three times and you've made yourself a checkpoint one, checkpoint two, and checkpoint three. Of course, make sure that you do give it the name checkpoint one, two, or three. Okay, let's take a look at our current script for winning. So this bit here is our winning. And in order for that to work, uh, first it sets the lap to zero, and then it repeats until player one's laps are equal to three. So it's going to do three laps. And every time we touch the finish, it will add one. Okay. So that makes sense, three laps, add one onto the lap each time. Um, and then once we've completed all three of those, so it'll keep going until this condition is met. When we've met all three of those, we've done three laps. So the next time we touch the finish, we win. So in order to complete a lap, the condition would be hitting all three checkpoints, one, two, three and then hitting the finish line. Well, we know that we can make the program repeat until something happens, but we can also make it wait for something to happen. So if we go into our control section, we actually have a wait until block. And what we're gonna do with this one is we're gonna say, you can't move forward past until the first lock condition is met which would be the first checkpoint. So the loop will wait until we touch the first checkpoint. So let's get into our sensing. We'll go and take a look at this. So touching, 
checkpoint one. And basically, we're just going to repeat that. So first time, it's going to be touching checkpoint one. Then it needs to touch checkpoint two. Next will be checkpoint three. And finally, checkpoint. Nope, start finish. So there's our four conditions. Touch this one, touch this one, touch this one, then this one. And how many laps do we want to do? Well, three laps. So really simple, I'm gonna repeat three times. And each time we need to meet all three conditions. So on our original script, we also have our variables. So let's pay attention to those. At the start, we want to set the variable for the player one laps to be zero. So let's copy that. Let's say set the player one lap to zero. And as soon as we start repeating into the laps, we're going to change the laps by one. So it starts at zero. The game starts and it changes to one. And then every time it laps, so once you hit this start finish, it's going to change the lap again by one. And we're going to do that three times. We've got three laps. Perfect. So if we've completed all of those things, what happens? Well, it's going to say, well done, you're a winner. Okay, so what we'd quite like to do is to test that now. And so I'm going to swap this hat over here. So I've got my event changed. I'm going to just dump all of this um, and see what our new win condition is looking like. Okay, so we've got this new win condition and I want to test it and make sure that it's working. So the first thing I'm going to do is add in some print statements. And I think this will look good in the game, but it's also just the way that I do testing. So by saying something to the screen, by printing, I can just get an indication that it's working. So if I pick him up here and now bring him to checkpoint one um, and just drop him over the top of it, he's now saying hello. So I know that touching checkpoint one is working. So I'm actually going to keep this in here and I'm actually going to have it say checkpoint because that's good information for the player. So each player is going to have a say checkpoint for two seconds every time they go over the line. You make one, duplicate it, and we can drop them in after each of our three checkpoints. So that's immediately gonna improve our game because now I can go to this one, although it's not running, so I think I have to rerun my script. Um, so I take this to here, checkpoint one, checkpoint two, checkpoint three, and then a lap and you can see the lap change to two here and i do that again and i can keep doing that for each lap did that say checkpoint and i missed it i didn't say checkpoint does that mean this one didn't checkpoint okay there we go lap three one more time let go on the checkpoint 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 and win um, so that's great. I think we can still add even more to that. So we have winner at the end, we have checkpoint. Why not also announce the laps? So if I say something again, so we're going to touch start finish and I'm going to say whatever the current lap is. So what we can actually do here, we could do like this lap one, lap two, but that's not very effective because the lap is going to change every time. So how do I know which lap it is? Well, instead of choosing a static number like this, what we can do is we can use a variable because it varies, it changes while the program is running. So actually I could have it say whatever the current lap number is. Um, so if I go and touch the start finish now, well, it would probably help if I run the program first, but if I go and touch on the start finish line now, it, it did it automatically because the sprite was touching from its start position. But if I go around and just do checkpoint one, checkpoint two, 
checkpoint three. When I get to here, it should say the current lap. So it says lap one. Um, and then it changes to lap two. So it's not a great place for it to be because it's telling us the wrong lap. So it would actually be better to put this at the very start as the first thing that happens because our lap will start at zero. We'll come directly into the loop and change it by one to become lap one. And then it's going to say lap one. And then the next time it goes around, it's going to get to lap two. And then the next time around, it will say lap three. Now, obviously, that's not great because it just says one or two or three, which one what? It could be anything. So actually, we're going to use um, a concatenation. But in Scratch, we call this a join. Um, and it's basically to add two things together and not necessarily numbers. You can put numbers together with a join, but they won't add. They just sit next to each other. So if I actually put inside of here my lap variable, so that will display the number. And so at the moment, it would say Apple 2 because it's lap 2 and the text is Apple. So I'm just going to change that to say lap. I might use capitals. Lap. And then I'll put a space because I want it to say lap space 2. Not all one word, lap two. Okay, so now I'm going to pop that in there instead and see what it says about that. So stop it, start it again. Oh, lap one, it's working. Um, now that can do lap one, lap two, lap three. If you want to make it even more, um, you could have the last lap. So lap number three would say final lap. So uh, there's a couple of different ways we can do that. First, I'm just going to take this um, say lap section out of my main block of code because it's starting to get quite full. And um, I'm going to use an if statement, so a selection statement. And if one condition is true, it's going to say the lap number. And if the other condition is true, then it's going to say final lap. So, well, when is it the final lap? Well, it's the final lap when the lap equals three. So I'm going to use an operator. Um, and I'm just going to say that if the variable lap one is equal to three, then I want you to say final lap. So say, really easy, final lap. Yay. <laughs> and if it's not saying final lap, then you're just going to say whatever the lap number is. And the great thing about a if statement, conditional statement, only one thing can be true. So only one of these can happen. So if it says lap three, or if it says final lap, it won't say this as well. It will only say this one. And because this won't be true, the first two laps, it will only say this section. So I'm going to just drop that back in right after the lap changes. So you've got two really big bits of script in here. We've got one that's changing the lap and telling us about it and one that's checking the checkpoints and telling us when we get there. So let's test that whole thing now. Um, so we'll run the program again. Here he is at lap one. I'm just going to pick him up for the testing. So it's lap number one. Touch here, checkpoint. Touch here, checkpoint. <laughs> one more time, checkpoint. And hopefully, lap number two. Okay, so we've made our way around. I'm such an excellent driver, right? So fast. And finally, final lap. Okay, you might want to test it by driving, but I'm such a bad driver, it would take a long time for me to show you that. Um, so basically, in today's video, we have now completed a new win condition. It's a lot more difficult to win. You have to go through the difficult checkpoints of the course um, and that will complete one lap condition and then three laps you can pass and be potentially the winner if you did it faster than player number two. So don't forget to copy all of this across to the player two. And when you do, 
you need to go through and find all the orange ones. Everything orange will be a variable. So there will be four main variable sections here. You need to set the player to lap to zero, change the player to lap by one, and of course be displaying the player to lap. But the checkpoint, all of these things can stay the same because both sprites will be using them. Um, we can look into further in the future, perhaps, perhaps conditions where we can tell you who touches start first and who is currently in first place. Um, but for today, that is all. Continue watching um, and let me know if there's anything you think we should add to this game.